Yeah, Sella Booth uh, with Product Manager Brian Winkie, and he's going to take us through a, uh, a short demo here. Okay. So, um, what we're focusing on and showcasing today uh, and this week at the ESRI User Conference is our, um, our new functionality released just this week, uh, our Excel GIS and our editing functionality. Um, and what our editing functionality does is in the web-based application for the back office users as well as in our mobile uh, application, Excel Mobile Office, we have um, the ways for uh, users to actually add uh, geospatial information, add geometry in the field, um, and for uh, basically when they're doing things like work orders, they want to put a new sign in, they can actually capture that sign while they're out in the field and then start to build their geodatabase. So we just kind of run through a little bit of the product. This here is the job list of Excel and Mobile Office. Um, and basically what you're looking at here is a list of jobs here on the left. Uh, we can expand this and get a little bit of information about it. You can see over here on the right hand side on the map um, that I have a, a, the same list as over there, but in this case, I actually have driving directions. So it'll take me from point A to point B. So the starting point is like maybe my home office or the office, um, and then I go to the first job and the second job and so on and so forth. And close that up, and you can see here's the route. And this is all done through ArcGIS server and the network extension. And if you're offline, you can also take advantage of it using ArcGIS engine and the ArcGIS engine network extension as well. So you can see where, where things are located and how do I get from point A to point B. Even with the map, I can use the map tip and get driving directions right from here. So from that point, basically, our application is for, um, for different business transactions within local government agencies. So city, county, state, and federal agencies would use this for things like building inspections, code enforcement cases, service requests, work orders, things like that. And so you can see here that I've gone into an inspection. There's, there is a uh, condition on it, so it's flagged something there for me. But also I have the inspection information right here. Um, I can go ahead and process this out. I can choose to cancel, deny, approve um, this inspection. Um, I can drill down into the actual permit itself. Again, you can see that there is some sort of condition that it's telling me, you know, like go in and get more details about it. Um, and here's the inspection, or sorry, the permit. Um, in, this is where it's located, so you can see it's GIS infused throughout. Um, and one of the things that we could do, let's say from the field, um, on this uh, building foundation residential permit, I might want to go into the location tab here and then say add a more specific location um, on the map for where this is located. So what I would do is I would open up the map. You can see here this map control comes up. And then from here, I can edit the permit edits layer. So I'll go ahead and you can see that it's editable with this pencil right here. And I'll turn on my editor and I can go in and I can say, well, the footing, the new foundation that we're talking about is actually, you know, like this. And then it brings up the attributes dialog. So in this case, I can, or at this point, I can put in an ID of that feature um, and I can put in the type. So let's just put in, well, let's do this one. Foundation 101, 1001, say it's a concrete foundation. And I'll just submit at that point. Sorry, it has to be numeric. In this case, I set it up just to be numeric, so I'll go ahead and, and do that. <laughs> Smart software. <laughs> So I already used that 1001 <laughs> right. in a previous demo, so I'll use 9910 instead. So I'll go ahead and hit submit. So in this case, you can see that right here, when I hover over it, this is permit edits 9910. Um, and then I can actually send that selected feature back to the permit uh, in the background. So you can see right here that I've now attached that geometry to this record. So now when I submit this record, um, people in the back office know specifically exactly where this is at. It's not the whole foundation of the house, it's not the whole parcel that you referenced when you went to that address or that parcel. It's actually the small sliver of land or, or uh, the foundation for poured concrete for a patio or something like that. So that would be a use case for that uh, on a permit. But if you consider things like work orders, I'll go ahead and save that. It's telling me that it's been saved. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to look at some work orders. And you could do the same thing from, um, you know, a work order for like a, a, a sign installation. Let's see if I have one here. A new sign installation, we'll say right here on 701 Judith. 
So you can see right here um, that I have a, a particular sign on that. Let's do the same thing. This is the address, 701 Judith, and I can add new geometry and attach it directly to it. So in this case, I already have one here, but let's go ahead and add another one. So the, the, the usefulness here is that while I'm out in the field where a sign never existed before, I'm going to install the new sign. So I'm gonna dig the hole, put in the, the post, attach the sign to it, Say it's a yield sign. So we'll maybe put in an install date today. We'll hit submit. So now what it's done is it's actually created the reference record for that asset as well. So and this is a different use case where it's a work order where I'm creating a new asset and a new geometry. It gives us the uh, ability to then enter in any other values, um, a description. I can update this and say it's now an active asset because it's physically in the ground. And then here I can go in and I can add different things like the northbound, eastbound, westbound, whatever, um, facing, and then any other uh, things I might want to add for the agency, um, you know, for descriptions and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I can add that in and then I can submit it. So now I've just created the geometry, I've created the reference record in Excel Automation, Asset Management, and I'm going to attach it to this work order and say, I've not only done the work to install the sign, but I now captured the geometry and I'm building my geo database. Great. Hey, thanks a lot, Brian. I appreciate that tour. Sure. You're welcome.